All right, we've certainly all heard of generational gaps, a gap year between high school and college, but one I don't really want to experience is something called an income gap. It's a real thing for retirees. So to help avoid anything that could turn an income gap into a canyon, we have Safe Harbor Retirement President Corey Sickles joining us. Good to see you, Corey. Glad to be here, Robin. Okay, so is some sort of income gap inevitable? Explain to us exactly what that is and, and why we could face that. The way I really look at it is you have to add up all your income, right? Social Security, um, maybe you're getting a pension, but at the end of the day, you still have a monthly budget. Right. So let's just say you're bringing in four thousand dollars in, in 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 Social Security and other pensions, but you need to make five thousand dollars a month to pay your bills. OK, that thousand dollar gap is what we call the income gap. And the only way that you're going to be able to solve that gap is by what you've saved. So that's one of the things that we've course focus on for our clients is how to fill that income gap. I was going to say, because if you don't prepare, that's a very difficult thing to probably fill once you're in that position. It, yes. Yeah. Preparation is really the key for it, right? Yeah. So that's why I think it's so important to work with an advisor so we can estimate, you know, project what, what, you know, what kind of income are you going to need in retirement and how are we going to solve that income gap? Because almost everybody has it. Right, right. What about some of the things, though, that you really can't control? So like inflation, uh, Medicare premium, Social Security, you cannot control or really sometimes you don't even know if it's going to be there. We talk about, you know, Social Security may or may not be there in 20 years. That's right? exactly right. You know, so if you look at Social Security this year, everyone just got notified. If you're getting if you've taken it, you're getting a 3.2 percent increase for 2024. However, is that really going to be able to keep up with inflation as well, right? right? So you might be retired, you might have already kind of solved that income gap, but all of a sudden in inflation goes up as well as, you know, Medicare Part B is going up 5.2%. Right. So, so things are going up. So you're going to probably have a little bit of an income gap every year that, you know, that you're going to have to keep because of inflation. So how can a retiree deal with that income gap then? So, you know, of course, a good way to be able to do that is maybe you have some money where you can invest if you're planning or if, even if you are retired. If you're planning, you can do a lump sum maybe into like a fixed indexed annuity. You know, we've talked about it on the show before. You know, you can't lose any money when the market, you know, goes down. You only make money when the market goes up. But more importantly, it can provide a lifetime income stream to you that's going to help you fill that income gap. You know, and again, the only way that we can say, hey, is that right for you is if you come in and meet with us to see if that, you know, that is a solution for you. Yeah, because we talk about, you know, people want stocks often because they want the gains. Right. But that risk is scary exactly when it comes right. to the market. That's exactly right. But just like anything, you do want to invest a little bit in stocks, too. Okay. But this is a good way to be able to get that guaranteed income. And then maybe you are invested in stocks to be able to maybe generate dividends off of that or something like that as well. All right, what about a portfolio that really just focuses on maximizing your income? Is that important? I think, I think it's very important now. But it, it, again, in order to keep up with inflation, people, you know, there's not too many people that say, I don't need income. Sure, no. Right? I wish, but right. yeah. <laughs> now, whether it's taxable or not, that's a whole different discussion. But, you know, we, we have like a, a product or a, a, a portfolio that you can invest into. It's called our absolute yield, where right now it's paying over 7% in dividends. So, you know, it's invested in preferred stock or, you know, maybe mortgage REITs, but it's invested or high yield bonds. It's invested in something where you can take that dividend with really out, you know, without touching your principal. Um, of course, the principal could go up or down based upon the market conditions, but at least you are getting some type of income that is coming to you on a monthly or quarterly basis. What about CDs? I feel like we heard a lot about those, you know, in the past, but maybe not so much these days. Yep. So CDs right now are paying a little over 5%. Okay. The, the one thing, you know, it, it's good for a growth, right? But when you put it into a CD, your money's now going to be tied up for a year, two years, three years, depending on how, often, how long you put it into that CD, right? So you might want to look at some different alternative investments. Um, you know, we have a stable fund that right now is, is, is actually making around 4.5%. So it's a little bit less than a CD, but it's completely liquid. Yeah, so, okay. so, so, you know, I think when you meet with an advisor, we're going to be able to kind of throw out different ways for you to be able to generate some additional income based off of dividends or a little bit of growth like that as well. Okay, definitely all starts too with a complimentary meeting, which you offer, right? So how can people take advantage of that? 
Yeah, if you give us a call at 614-760-0670 or visit our website at safeharboroh.com, you can schedule a complimentary no obligation meeting with us. You know, we're here to help to make sure that you have the retirement that you want. So, And a lot of people do that in the new year, before the new year. This is kind of that time to take stake of all these things. So Fourth quarter, first quarter is always usually the busiest time of the year for us. All right, we'll give them a call. Thank you so much, Corey. Thank you, Robin.